part of, I think, you know, trying to find, I've, I've used the phrase before, but trying to find my tribe, you know, we're kind of like the beautiful ones, the wild ones, these sorts of things, trash especially. And Invisibles is sort of like partly that, looking for, you know, looking for some sort of like, you know, group um, identity, I suppose. It's very much written from a point of view, of, of kind of like of myself as an, as an adolescent. And this is the song that's close, most closely related to Cold Black Mornings. I was sort of like writing the lyrics to this while I was writing that book. And I was sort of at, at the phase in that book where I'm kind of like just sort of left home and gone to university and sort of that, that sort of thing of kind of feeling like a kind of confused sort of 18 year old or whatever, you know. And I wanted to kind of bring that into the into the into the story of the lyric kind of thing and, and have this sense of being that you have when you're a young man of always being kind of excluded when you're kind of especially when you're poor and kind of sort of marginal you know always being kind of like your face is always kind of pressed up to the glass but you're not allowed into the into the sweet shop sort of thing and I wanted that that sense of kind of just trudging around the streets and sort of like you know doors being slammed in your face which we all know the feeling of you know and it's, it's but I wanted to try and capture that and it's just, it's slightly out of sync with the rest of the record because it's it's from the point of view of a of a young man rather than a, specifically of a child. So it kind of it, it jolts off the path sort of thing. Really, it's not it's not strictly part of the narrative of the record. But sometimes you just do that, and you know, it, sometimes being too self conscious about these things, it, it's, it's it's I think it's detrimental. You just allow things to work. Sometimes music gets in the way, and the song was good enough, and it justified. I think. I think because we were working with someone we hadn't worked with before, and Alan hadn't done a lot of recording for a long time, he, he pretty much just mix, mixes now, and we kind of asked him to record, and he was kind of, oh, okay. Um, I think it was just the fact that it came together really quickly, didn't it? The actual recording. I think it was a much easier recording process than we've been through for a long time. We're really quick to re record, it's the writing that takes years. Well, I think one of the things is that the stuff was was really written. We quite often go into the studio and say, OK, we're going to take this apart and take this apart and move this around. And I think there was a case of, you'd done a lot of the heavy lifting before we got in, hadn't you? So the, what the, especially as Alan's not particularly a writerly producer, he's a much more sonic producer. So he's not there going, OK, can we double that chorus? Throw that bit away. Yeah. Yeah. He's just like, right, how do I make this sound fucking great? And I think we were prepared for that, which is one of the reasons why it, everything was, was properly written. Mm. But it also just meant that it just felt really productive, didn't it? It was kind of bang, okay, another one, another one. We didn't throw anything away. We didn't go down rabbit holes, really. It just felt pretty natural, like someone worked with for, for years and years and years. 